There you are. All right, we are back. Drag racing was freaking awesome. Um, brought back a lot of good memories. Really happy with the Camaro here. Yep. She was right on par with our old nitrous Mustangs back in the day, uh, as far as mile an hour in the eighth. Uh, we did have an issue. We found we couldn't launch the car hard. Um, the car would go into real bad shake and fall on its face. I'm pretty sure it's a carburetor issue probably needs extended bent baffles or extended rear jets. We'll get it apart and figure that out, but uh, super stoked with how that went. Super B went down the drag strip probably for the first time in 40 some years. Um, Camaro, by the end of the night, we had it going really well. We, we actually ran right alongside a supercharged uh, LS Silverado. So really stoked with that. So let's get this carb apart and see what's going on. All right, we got the monster out. It's only leaking a little bit of gas all over me. 770 Street Avenger. Pretty good carburetor, pretty happy with it. I'm gonna go dump all this fuel out on some fire ants and really piss them off. Strangely satisfying. All right, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend to tell you that I know a lot about carburetors because I really don't. I'm kind of a fuel injection guy. Set it and forget it. However, this is what we got. Um, this is actually the 600 off of my son's C10. Uh, he blew the power valve out the other day. He was trying to warm it up too fast. Um, weather changed a little bit. Luckily we had this uh, a spare on the coronet over there. Took it apart. Made him do all that work. Pretty cool. He needs to know how to do that stuff, right? So uh, you can see the differences here. You got side hung fuel bowls versus center hung fuel bowls. Uh, they have a fuel bowl vent for this style, but we're going to be focusing on the center hung. You can see the forward vent is shorter um, than the rear. I'm not sure why, but you can imagine under acceleration, all the fuel inside these bowls sloshes rearward. So not such an issue here, maybe during hard cornering or hard braking, but here you can see the fuel would want to climb right up that vent, come right out this tube, go right in your carburetor, causing you to go rich, causing the car to basically choke itself out with too much fuel. So actually it might be pretty cool if you had nitrous on it, but in our instance, this was causing all our problems. So we're going to knock this bowl off real quick. I bought the vents. They are somewhere. There they are. So this is the kit we got. These are bowl vent baffles, center hung. So they look like a little whistle, like a little blow whistle, but uh, I'll show you exactly how these go. Cause if you go online on YouTube right now and you try to research bowl vent, bowl vent baffles, you won't come up with nothing. There's like one video where the guy talks about explaining the vent system but nobody shows you how to put these in, so that's why we're here. In addition to these bowl vent uh, baffles, there's another modification you can do, um, and you can connect the vent tubes with a piece of PCV fuel line. Uh, make sure you've got a slot here. The pressure still needs to equalize with the atmosphere, but uh, this is a lot of 4x4 and off-roading guys do this, especially if you go look up the off-road Truck Avenger carburetors, they have this tube in copper with holes in it already on there for you. However, in this car, with this setup, we don't have enough room for this. So I'm hoping it don't come to this, because uh, we may have to pull the hood off if we need to do this. Uh, being the fact that has the air gap 
RPM intake and the 81 cal induction, we barely have enough room. That's why we run. <coughs> I'm dying. We barely have enough room for an air cleaner. That's why we run that stupid little thin cane. And I'm sure that's Robin horsepower. But as we continue the trend of making this car look like an old 70s street freak, we're either going to go no hood tunnel ram or we'll find a snorkel hood. We'll do something, but it's obviously not ideal. Brass center hung floats. So, wonder what this was that fell out of there. That's interesting. Looks like we didn't tear the gasket for the first time ever. Don't speak too soon though. Look at that. A little bit of goo, not too bad. So what do they mean by center hung fuel bowls? The float is hung by the center. That's all that means. When you set your float height, turn it upside down, you use your tool and set that gap right there for your initial setting. And then a lot of people will pull this sight plug and adjust the bowl I'm sorry, adjust the float height till just underneath that. That's a lot of fuel. You can see how much fuel that is in here. But you get into 770, you're talking about big, big cubic inches you should have to have a carburetor this big. All right, uh, here you can see your jets, power valve, uh, air fuel adjustment. This carburetor has a uh, does not have four corner adjustability at this time. Well, let's uh, see about getting these baffles installed. It says right here, never use as a pry bar, punch, or chisel. Never. Let's see what we got here. All right. Now you can actually see the business end of the power valve. Like I said, what we just blew up in that carburetor over there last week. This is your metering block. Again, jets, power valve, air fuel adjustments. Pretty cool. This carburetor already has the good, not uh, paper gaskets in it. Actually looks really good inside compared to <laughs> what my sons looked like last week. So, you can see this little dimple is already here. That's where we're going to drill the hole for the little rivet that holds the whistle in place. So basically, if you can see in there, it's hollow. Looks like a whistle. Not really. Um, this will slide right inside there. You'll put the little rivet through it. So as fuel sloshes up instead of the fuel vent coming out instead of the fuel being able to go right through there right up and out of the vent the fuel will have to be way out here to go so it basically brings your fuel vent forward about an inch inside the carburetor I'm assuming oh well, yeah. you would think, well, how isn't fuel just going to go in around it? Well, that orifice, <laughs> orifice, that orifice is tapered down and this fits in there very snug. Just like so, right? I may be um, reiterating a few things and saying things a couple of times, but I'm really trying to show how to do this because... Like I said, there is no, I'm over here. There is no videos on YouTube about how to do this. I looked, I didn't look for very long, but 
I tried to search in multiple ways. So let's get uh, get this kit installed. Hopefully this fixes our issue. The bitch of it is, I won't know until I get to Sykeston because the car just blows the drag radials off on the street. It doesn't ever get traction. This problem is only evident when the car actually hooks. So if we didn't fix it, we'll be in Sykeston pulling the hood off and we'll be adding that right there. We'll be adding that right there. And we'll probably run down to the local auto parts store and grab a big old air cleaner and see if we can pick up some mile an hour. Well, obviously the big concern would not be to get any debris in here. Um, it does come with this little rivet. A lot of people use some two-part epoxy like a JB Weld or something that uh, fuel doesn't break down to really seal that up. I'm going to go ahead and use the rivet as I don't have any JB Weld and I'm running out of time. Uh, so to be sure I get the right drill bit, I'm going to measure the rivet at 71 thousandths and go with a drill bit just a tiny bit smaller so when I tap this rivet down in here eh, when I tap that rivet down in here those little uh, spiral threads whatever you want to call those grab the aluminum body and don't let that fall out I'm going to use this drill bit This pole. All right, so now we know where that goes. Tiny hole in here. So very important to note, when you install it, make sure that the angle is down like that. You can see that fuel is going to want to climb up here. If you put it in like this, going up, it will not fit in here right at all. So make sure you have your whistle pointing down. There you have it. Pretty simple. Okay, so thanks to the wonders of the internet and Holly's website, you can see right here. Eh, I lost it. Item number 40. This is the factory vent baffle. So that would have went across the two uh, pins right here. But obviously, it's not going to fit with that install. So you don't reuse that. We'll throw that in our car box. Mystery solved. Now we can reassemble. So you can see that wasn't terribly difficult. Um, pretty sure that was causing our issue. I can't see the back one causing that issue in a drag race environment. Again, uh, in an off-road 4x4 situation or road racing, heavy duty braking and cornering, I could see the rear being a problem. Um, we'll take the kit with us, um, throw it in there if we need it, but I, I think we're gonna be fine, like I said. The next fix would be something like that. I'll also take this with us. Um, just make sure when you, if you decide to do this, you clean all the rubber off here. You don't want all this little rubber dust going down and blocking all your air bleeds. All right, hope we did good.
Well, there you go. Pretty easy to do. Pretty happy with the results so far. We'll take it on a test drive. Maybe go grab some chicken fingers and make sure we got no leaks. We'll grab a fire extinguisher just in case. We'll have to see if this works at the drag strip. All right. Next time you see us, we'll be racing. Take care, guys.